Okay, so now let's do another breakfast item, which is pain perdu, meaning translates from French to English as lost bread. So it's bread that would have normally have been lost, being in that it's stale or it's just ends and pieces, things like that. There's several things you can do with it. I mean, just because uh, if you don't make pain perdu doesn't mean that it's something you have to throw away. Uh, leftover bread is something that you could do a lot with. Uh, the ends and the pieces, what was left from the day before, uh, can be cut up into large cubes and make croutons out of. It can be let out, uh, just set open to the air in your kitchen, let it set out for a day or two until it gets hard, grind it up for fresh bread crumbs, which, uh, by the way, are leaps and bounds better than what you're buying in bags. Uh, if you look at one of the ingredients on bread, on a bread crumbs that come in a can or a box or a bag, uh, one of the ingredients is sugar that they add to it. Uh, so uh, anyway, with fresh bread crumbs, you control what's in that. You control the seasoning, how they taste, and so forth. Anyway, enough on bread crumbs. Uh, you can do bread pudding. You can do a lot of different things with it. But paper do is a good one. It's a typical New Orleans Creole dish, and. Um, uh, in a nutshell, it's kind of like French toast, but again, we're going to do it with French bread. It's very easy, very simple, a great brunch recipe. Uh, it does have some variations you can do with it. I'm going to just do a standard pain for do recipe here to show you, and uh, let's get started. So, let's move down here. Let's show our board and our work area. Okay, we're going to get started by taking some French bread. You have like a pistolet or a banh mi loaf, uh, but you can uh, normally do it with big uh, like Leidenheimers or Risings or Zip uh, pull boy bread. And uh, what I do with it is I cut them on an angle. So the first thing I would do was uh, on a bias, about 45 degrees, I would just cut the end off or the heel off or whatever you want to call it. Then about one inch thick sliced pieces. If you're not sure what one inch is, use that ruler that I told y'all a couple weeks ago to have. So they're kind of like cut on a bias. Just like that. That would be one portion, would be three pieces. Man, the great thing about this restaurant, about this dish from a, uh, a commercial or business perspective is uh, food cost. Man, this is, this is made for profit. So let's take these, move them out the way over here. Then we'll take a mixing bowl. Our recipe calls for four eggs. First thing we're gonna do, crack our eggs. Every time you crack eggs into a bowl for practice, try not to crack yolks. See how many you can crack open, leaving the yolks hole. So you'll get practice for working an egg station or a brunch station so you can do over lights or over easy or just basically fried eggs. So what I like to do with this, uh, take this, let's go ahead and add our sugar, one cup of sugar. that down to the side and let's go ahead and blend that together break your yolks remember when we're mixing don't hold your whisk like that and not stirring pull from the end along the bottom whip your eggs up okay so here what we're going to add next is our one cup of milk, our one cup of evaporated milk. Evaporated milk, as you remember from Culinary 101, is milk that's had 60% of the water uh, evaporated out. So when you have eggs and you're adding liquids and you're going to use that to thicken, that's called a custard. So we now have a custard. Whisk. Combining those eggs all throughout the milk. That's our basic custard right there. So what we want to do after that is to add a little bit of flavors to it. 
so. So from here, let's go ahead and add in our cinnamon. We want to get a teaspoon of cinnamon. Teaspoon on your measuring spoons is the second largest one. You got a whole tablespoon, a whole teaspoon, and everything else are fractions of a teaspoon. You should have a third, uh, a half a third and a quarter. One teaspoon of cinnamon. You're gonna use a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Nutmeg uh, is a lot stronger. It has a lot bolder flavor, smell it. To me, it smells like Christmas. It smells like eggnog. Uh, or like a cocktail called a Brandy Alexander. Okay. We're going to use uh, our orange zest, a full tablespoon. So you, to make zest, this is zest. It's already been it's already been uh, uh, zested up. It's the yellow part of the peel of the orange. So using a grater, a box grater, or if you have a microplane, uh, if you have your toolkit, it came with a microplane. If you don't have a toolkit, uh, it's a very handy tool to have. Uh, we talked about them earlier in the earlier uh, in this class. So zest, we add zest because there's a lot more flavor. That's where all the oil is. Okay, that's in the zest, and uh, also it gives you orange flavor without the acidity and without diluting or not adding any more liquid to it. So we're going to add uh, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay, and then we're also going to have our orange juice. Okay, it's a half a cup. A half cup is going to be the second largest one off your uh, your ingredient list. Put those off to the side. Clean up our board and whisk. We want to whisk as much as we can to try to get as much of that cinnamon and nutmeg broken up. It's going to be larger chunks in here. Uh, you can put this in a blender. You can use an immersion blender if you want to to try to get them mixed up a little bit better. But this will be fine uh, for what we're doing. The cinnamon and the nutmeg are going to continue to float up to the top, so every couple pieces that you do, you're going to want to uh, re-whisk them, whisk them back together. So we're going to move over to the stove and uh, get our skillet hot and get ourselves ready to go. Oh, first though, let's go ahead and put, uh, let's go ahead and put, we're going to do three at a time. We'll put three pieces of po' boy bread in here. Uh, put it on one side, press it down some, don't squeeze it, press it down, flip it over. I'll meet you at the stove. Okay, here we are at the stove. My pan has been sitting over fire low to medium heat you don't want it super hot low is better my clarified butter's already been melted somewhat because it's kind of warm back here so we're going to add clarified butter just enough to put a nice coating on the bottom of the pan we're not deep frying okay so we'll put the butter down there clarified butter uh, if you ever take butter and melt it and pour it into a clear glass beaker or a container and you can look through the sides, you'll see white thin liquid on the bottom, that's water. You'll see some clear yellow oil in the middle, that's butter fat. And then you'll see some uh, foamy white bits on the top, that's coagulated protein or like we called earlier curd, but that's coagulated protein. So we're going to take our bread that's been soaked in here for about maybe 60 seconds. You want, the, you want it to get soaked all the way through. Try not to squeeze it or misshape it too much. If you leave it set too long, I'm going to turn that fire off. This happens. It breaks. But hey, we're going to save the crunch. I'm going to push those together, reshape it again. Put 
goes right in there just like that my fire was a little high so i turned it off i'm gonna let that pan cool down now let's come back with the flame again let the dip chill down all right That burn is not cooperating. Let's come over here. So we'll use this burner. Let's give it a shake to loosen them up. Turn them down. See, I want it low because I don't want it to just brown on the outside. I want it to brown on the outside, but I also want it to cook through in the middle. I'm going to push these two together in hopes that uh, in hopes that it'll kind of fuse itself together again. I know I'm using metal spatula on a non-stick pan and being very gentle. Again, we want to make sure we got butter underneath. So I'll hold these two together. If I was a gambling man, I would gamble and say, I think this is going to stick together. If not, for a guest, we would take that out, put it off to the side, put another good looking piece in there, and then after cook that and maybe send that to the bar or send it out to a small child at the table as a little extra freebie treat from the kitchen or a little gift from the chef kind of thing. Uh, so uh, if we go in here, this doesn't take too long. We'll be ready to flip in just a couple seconds. So we'll come back. Okay, so here we are back again. Let's give them a shake. Uh, you want to try not to flip them until they're browned all the way on the bottom, just like that. See, that's why I'm not a betting man. And we're going to let these go until it's browned on the bottom and cooked all the way through. We want to uh, we want to make sure that those, it's raw eggs, and we want to make sure that those eggs are cooked through. We don't want to serve an undercooked product to a guest. So, in a restaurant, while you're working in a commercial situation, you can't sit around and watch the watch the the, the food cook got to stay busy you got to be doing something when something's marinating then you go get something else while something else is in the oven, while one thing is in the oven you go start another thing and get it going multitask if you don't you will not survive in the kitchen uh, you won't get you won't be able to get all your work done you won't be able to get everything completed so while I was away uh, and this was cooking I was setting up my plate I got my powdered sugar set up I got my uh, a sifter uh, or a strainer uh, if you have one to be able to do that with uh, uh, that's all set up there a fork and knife uh, and everything's ready to go ready to look with it so staying productive it's an important part I bet you we're just about done here I'm gonna try to get a little sneak peek at the bottom just another minute or two here and we'll be good. So what do you serve this with? Uh, most of the time, just a little powdered sugar sprinkled on the top. Uh, we'll be fine with it. Uh, some people like syrup. Uh, I, uh, I think it's really good with uh, Steen's cane syrup. Uh, if you've never had cane syrup before, uh, go to the grocery store, get a bottle and try it. Or when you come pick up food again, or if you buy the kitchen, just ask if you can 
take a little container of it home, you've never had it and you want to try it. Uh, it's got a totally different flavor than pancake syrup. Uh, when you're buying regular pancake syrup like Aunt Jemima or Miss Butterworth or something like that, that's mainly corn syrup with uh, flavorings added to it. Uh, you can get pure maple syrup, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's very, very, very good. Uh, it's a lot lighter in flavor than what uh, the regular uh, breakfast syrup, pancake syrup you're used to eating, or Steens, which has a, it's darker and has a much stronger flavor. So I think we're done. Let's come over here and plate up. Flipping around over here so I can give you a view. We're going to put this one down first. Again, being very gentle, we're going to shingle that one. Come up, we'll shingle this one. Move that in, make them look pretty. The old saying that people say, you, every, people eat with their eyes, but you don't eat with your eyes, you eat with your mouth. But you see things with your eyes, and that's your first impression. And first, another cliche that is true is that the first impressions are the most lasting. So we're going to take a strainer, put our powdered sugar. As you can see, the powdered sugar is in big lumps. It would taste the same if it was on that plate, but this looks a lot better. It's kind of like snow. And we're just going to put some down right over the top. And that, my friends, is orange pain Purdue. So a couple things you can do. I said there's some variations that you can do with it. Uh, one of the things that's really nice with it is uh, when you put it down for the very first time in your skillet, before you put your uh, your bread down in the skillet, uh, sprinkle some chopped pecans down in there first and then put the paint do right on top of that. Uh, flip it over. You can use raisin bread instead of French bread and then you can put pecans on there. If you do raisin bread, you want to try to get the really thick slice or get the unsliced one and slice it yourself. Uh, you could put some berries down. Uh, you could put a chocolate syrup on top of it if you wanted, something like that. But I want you to try it just like this, okay? And uh, if you have some steams, uh, pure cane syrup, if you have steams, I'm not promoting that product at all. I don't make money on it. I don't even know anybody whose last name is Steen. But uh, it's a delicious thing. We use it quite a bit. I use it in a lot of different products.